Hello, and welcome to the Fairy Tale Unit. Once again, I must remind you, think of the following things. What are the things each fairy tale could be trying to tell you about the society it's written for? How does the fairy tale react to the supernatural and why? How does it treat men? How does it treat women? How is it different depending on where it's written? And how is it the same? And how are the movie clips, poems, and articles related to each story? So this is Aladdin. The Aladdin clips... I actually have quite a few Aladdin clips. Not as many as some of the other ones, but Aladdin, you're going to start at 8. Oh, it's just 8 and 9, sorry. Nope, 8, 9, and 10. Um, if you want to watch either of the Disney Aladdins, that's fine. It's another one that doesn't get adapted very much, but to be fair, I think I know why. So there's two fairy tales in this little collection. One is Aladdin and one is the Blue Light, which is our Aladdin light story. It's basically the European Aladdin. Now Aladdin is fascinating because it was written, it's in the Thousand and One Arabian Nights, but it's set in a far off land. And it's very, very heavily implied that it's actually a story set in Asia. So think about that when you're reading Aladdin. Just throwing that out there. So here's the story of Aladdin. Once upon a time, there was a boy, really a young man, and he was not a very hardworking person. He lived with his mother, and he's like, I'm just going to play all day with my friends. And she's like, maybe you could work, perhaps. And he's like, nah, you're fine. So his mom does all the work supporting herself and her deadbeat son, because her husband has died. And one day, Aladdin's playing in the streets with his buddies, and this guy shows up, and he's like, hey, I'm your long-lost uncle. And Aladdin's like, sweet. Does that mean you have money for me and I don't have to work? And the guy's like, well, can I see my beloved brother? And Aladdin's like, uh, he's dead, but you can meet my mom. And the guy's like, oh, my brother. So he brings this guy home and his mom's like, I don't think my husband had a brother. Now, he doesn't. This is actually an evil magician who knows that there's only one person who can break into this cave that he needs to get into and knows that it's Aladdin. So he's made up this whole story. But he's there, and he's going to give them, he gives them some food and helps take care of him for a couple days. And he's like, here, Aladdin, let's go for a walk. And Aladdin's like, okay, sounds great. So they go for a walk, and they find this garden. And there's a little hole in the garden. And he's, the guy, the uncle is, the uncle is like, you know, I think that uh, I've done all this for you. Maybe you can do me a favor? And Aladdin's like, yeah, sure, what? And he's like, there's a lamp down there. And I really want this lamp. But I can't get it because I'm old and wrinkly. So I need you to get it. And Aladdin's like, okay, cool. And the uncle, uncle, is like, also, here, take this ring. So he sticks a ring on Aladdin's finger. He's like, if you get stuck, the ring will help. And the Aladdin's like, this is weird, but sure. So he climbs down and he's walking around. He sees these trees with jewels on them. And he's like, I want. So he picks some of the jewels. They're hanging like fruit. Puts them in a handkerchief, moves on. Finds the lamp. It's great sticks it in his pocket, gets to the front door of the cave, and he's like, all right, here I'm coming. And his uncle's like, here, give me the lamp, and I will give you a handout. And Aladdin's like, or give me a handout, then I give you the lamp. Because he's gotten kind of suspicious since being down there, since he gave him all this stuff, and he's like, this is kind of weird, because it wasn't that hard of a walk. Is there some reason you needed me to do it specifically? Because he's not dumb, he's just a little silly. And so the uncle's like, no. And so he closes him in. And Aladdin's like, well, you're obviously not my real uncle. And the guy's like, no, really? So Aladdin's sitting there and he's twiddling his thumbs. And then he accidentally brushes the ring. And this little genie pops up and he's like, I'm the genie of the ring. And Aladdin's like, can you get me out of here? And the genie's like, no, this is a magic cave. However, you do have the lamp. And Aladdin's like, the what now? What? He's like, you know, the lamp, there's a genie in there. That genie's powerful. He can do that for you. I can only transport you around normal, non-magical places. And Aladdin's like, okay, good to know, thanks. So the genie goes back inside the ring, and then he rubs the lamp, and the genie pops out, and he's like, yes, what do you wish of me? And Aladdin's like, I want to get out of this cave. And the genie's like, done. So he brings him home. And Aladdin is like, sweet. So then he uses the genie to get a lot of food, and his mom's like, what have you done? Have you been stealing? Because she didn't see the lamp. Um... And Aladdin's like, no. So he rubs the lamp and the genie pops up and his mom's like, ah, and faints. So Aladdin and his mom are doing pretty well because anytime they need stuff, they can magic stuff on, they can magic food on gold plates and they can sell the gold plates. 
But Aladdin is walking through the streets one day and he happens to see the princess on a mysterious day when uh, she's not wearing her veil because everyone is supposed to be off the streets so she can go to the bathing house and so she's not wearing her veil. But Aladdin's being a creeper and he sees her anyway. And he's like, I want to marry her. And he's like, Mom, I want you to go tell the, the Sultan that I want to marry his daughter. And his mom's like, excuse me? And he's like, yeah, I want to marry the princess. So get on that. And she's like, that's not how this works. So she, he's like, no, no, take this, take this handkerchief and bring it to the Sultan and tell him where that came from because your son wants to marry his daughter. She's like, all right. So she goes and she does do that. And the Sultan's like, um old lady what are you what's your deal here and she's like i've got this and it's it's the fruit that he picked the gold that he picked the gems that he picked from the trees in the lamp cave and sultan's like that's a lot of money but i already kind of promised my daughter to the grand vizier's son and she's like all right thumbs the brakes so she goes home to tell aladdin and he's like that's not gonna fly so he ends up giving her a lot of money and she goes back every day and then he decides to kidnap the princess so every night he kidnaps the princess and brings her to his house and they just have nice conversations and she's like he's so charming and nice even though he kidnaps me <sighs> so then finally she's like her, her father is like so you seem really happy lately and she's like yeah i met this guy and he's like what and she's like no 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 I don't know, but I've been wearing my veil, so it's fine. And he's like, the Grand Vizier's son? And she's like, no, I don't know who he is. But uh, I think that you should maybe open up the marriage thing to someone other than the Grand Vizier's son. And he's like, I don't listen to you, you're a girl. But there is this guy who's been bringing me a lot of money. And I'm kind of considering marrying you to him instead. And she's like, interesting. Tell me more. But he doesn't say that because she's a girl. She's like, oh, okay. So then Aladdin's mom shows up, and he's really doubled down. He's brought a lot more money this time. And he's like, okay, fine, I'll meet your son. The Sultan's like, I'll meet your son this time. So Aladdin calls the genie and gets this whole big parade, which is like the Prince Ali song, only slightly toned down. And all these fancy dresses. And the princess is like, oh, it's my true love. And the Sultan's like, okay, here's the deal. You can marry my daughter if you make me a beautiful, fancy palace next door to my palace. When that's done, you can marry my daughter. And Aladdin's like, <laughs> easy. And the Sultan's like, what? He's like, don't worry about it. Nothing, nothing, nothing. So he talks to the genie, and the genie makes this beautiful, magnificent palace. And so Aladdin gets to marry the princess, and they move in, and they're pretty happy. But the magician has been wandering around, and he's like, oh, that lamp. So then finally he hears about this guy who's married the princess, and he's like, what? So he goes and gets a whole bunch of copper lamps, and he goes through the streets going, new lamps for old lamps, new lamps for old lamps. And the princess's servants are like, that guy's dumb. And she's like, that is really silly. Although, we do have this old lamp, because Aladdin left it there when he went hunting. And she's like, so maybe I'll trade that out, and we'll have a new lamp, and I'll surprise my husband, it'll be great. So they trade lamps, and so they have a new pretty shiny lamp magician has the actual lamp and so he's like i want aladdin's castle and his princess to go somewhere else with me and so he basically kidnaps them by magic and the genie's like all right fine so aladdin gets home and his castle's gone and he's arrested so i'm like where's my daughter and he's like i don't know but let me find my wife because you know i love her and i'd like to find her so he gets the ring he's like genie the ring could you please bring me to my wife and tell me what's up so he's brought to the little cushion the little pile right underneath his wife's balcony and they make a scheme and basically the magician has been trying to marry the princess and she's like already married so he's kind of being a jerk about it though so finally aladdin's like what i want you to do is drug him and then we'll stab him and she's like and then we can go home it's like then we can go home so she drugs him and then they stab him and then they kill him and the genie of the lamp brings them back home. And everything's great for a while. But it turns out the magician has a brother. This is a lot of stuff that was cut from the Disney movie. And you can tell why, because it's kind of convoluted and weird. So the magician has a brother. And the brother of the magician is like, you know, I'm kind of irritated that my brother was just murdered. So he decides that what he's going to do, he disguises himself as a woman. And becomes best friends with the princess through 
pretending to be a woman. I guess he's really good at it. I don't know. So then, uh, they have this whole thing, and she's he convinces her that they want this famous egg thing hanging in the castle, and Aladdin's like, all right. So he asks the genie. The genie's like, you know that that lady is going to kill you, right? And he's like, what? She's like, yeah, that lady is a dude, and she's going to kill you. He's going to kill you. And also, this whole thing's a trap. And so Aladdin stabs the lady, and the princess is like, you stabbed my best friend. And he's like, actually, she's a dude. And the princess is like, oh! <gasps> Oh, no. And she was going to try to kill us all. And now that the magician and his brother are both dead for realsies this time, Aladdin and his princess live happily ever after. The end. Yeah. This is one of those times where I have to hand it to Disney. I kind of like theirs better. If it were set in China. Have a good day. Cab out.